Hello again and welcome back to the Fatfish Guitar Studio. I'm Dave and in this lesson I'm going to kind of continue a theme that I started in a previous video where we take a look at a basic musical idea and way to play that and then look at some ways we can kind of change it up, introduce new techniques and uh, change it around a little bit, make it a bit more interesting and add a bit more variety. Now the last example we're playing a little lead line, a little uh, little musical phrase. This time around we're going to focus a little bit more on, on rhythm playing. Now we we'll only need one chord shape for this. One, we're going to play a number of chords but what we've got is a movable chord shape and it's probably the most important chord shape you will ever learn, particularly if you're playing rock music. Uh, or incidentally guitar of the day today is my Thompson custom guitar. I'm going into the PV Valve King on the Dirty Channel and I've got a little bit of uh, extra gain coming from a Blackstar LT Boost pedal. It sounds like that. The chord we're going to be playing though is, like I said, the most important chord you'll ever learn and it's the power chord. There's only two notes in it. Actually there's three notes but one of them repeats itself. So let's start off, show you the shape. We're playing a C power chord so we're going to start on C which is the 8th fret on the bottom E string. Play that with our index finger. Then using the ring finger, 2 frets higher, the 10th fret on the A string, we're going to play a, a, a G. And then also at the 10th fret on the 4th string, just below that we're going to use our little finger, and that also gives us a C. If we put those three notes together, that's a C power chord. Now the progression I'm going to show you, we're going to use basically that same chord shape and move it around. So when we're playing it with a C as the root note, it's a C power chord. If I play it down here with a B flat as the root note, it's a B flat power chord and, and so on. So we're going to start off the first chord we play is a C, then the next chord we play is a B flat, so we'll move the whole thing down to semitone, so the root note is at the uh, sixth fret. Move the whole thing down again by another two semitones, so that the root note is this A flat at the fourth fret on the bottom E string. And then we're going to finish on. A G power chord, so the root note is the G, the third fret on the bottom E string. And we can just play that around in a loop. As a chord progression that sounds interesting enough but it's not really uh, working too well as a rhythm part because there's not much happening rhythmically we need to kind of do something a bit more interesting with a picking hand so just put basically put a bit of a, a rhythm into it <laughs> There's loads of ways you could uh, you could play around with that, so I'll leave it for you to experiment and come up with some of your, of your own rhythm patterns. I'm not intending this to become a like a counting exercise or a, a rhythm uh, a rhythm exercise. I'm just basically kind of give you give you some ideas. And I'll probably use some different patterns throughout this uh, video just to uh, maybe give you a little bit of inspiration. But the the important thing is that the the right hand, the picking hand, is giving the rhythmic uh, interest here while the, the fretting hand is, is moving around the chords and giving you the, 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 the harmonic, the melodic movement. What I want to think about now is though something else that we're doing with the, the, the right hand and this kind of becomes an issue when you're playing with a, an overdriven sound like this. It, it's easy for the whole thing to get a bit muddy and you lose some of the rhythmic, um, I guess you could kind of call it like the chug and what you can do is using the, the fleshy part of your your hand, the, so the, the side of the, the palm of your picking hand, is rest that on the on the strings just at the bridge. Now you don't want to push down so much that you're starting to push the, the trem out of tune and make the strings go sharp. You're just putting your hand down with just enough pressure. 
the strings go dead. And you're not going to do that all the time. You're only going to do this kind of for the, the, like the off beats or the bits where you, you don't want the chord to ring out. I'll show you what I mean, just, just pedaling around on the C power chord there. So there you can hear, I'm allowing the, like the, the important beat, that one beat to ring out, and then the other beats, I'm just muting the strings and getting more of a little chugging sound. And that just gives you a bit more interest, and it stops the, the rhythm part from getting really muddy. Like I said, when you've got a lot of overdrive or, or, or distortion on your sound, the whole thing just kind of kind of washes into this, this big mushy sort of sort of sound, um, and you lose some of the some of the rhythmic interest. So by alternating between loud chords for it to ring out and muting them, you get a bit more rhythmic interest. Okay, so let's try that in in the chord progression using a combination of straight picking and muted chord tones. So you can hear the, the difference there, it's a lot more, I feel like it's a lot more rhythmic, you're hearing the, like that rhythmic chug and it's a really really useful technique for hard rock and metal rhythm playing is being able to use that palm mute. You can use it in, in lead playing as well but it's especially useful for rhythm patterns. Something else we can think about doing is rather than playing the chords as full chords, it's how about we arpeggiate them. Now an arpeggio is where you're playing notes from a chord in it's like in series rather than in parallel. So that's a chord. And is an arpeggio. Playing one note at a time from low to high and back down again. And if you notice there, I'm using my right hand palm. I'm not totally muting the strings. I'm just allowing them to mute slightly so that they don't get all, all mushy. So let's try incorporating playing those chords as arpeggios as part of the, uh, the chord progression. Now all the time you're playing this, Keep an eye on the timing. This is about playing the rhythm, so it's meant to be nice and smooth and even, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Each chord, each if you like each bar of music should be lasting as, as long as as each other. So keep in mind on, on your timings as well. Now what else are we doing in this progression that we might want ch want to change? Something I've noticed we're doing is we're playing four bars. And in every bar, we're playing basically the same pattern. We're just playing it on, say, a C chord, or a B flat chord, or an A flat chord, or a G chord. How about we play something a little bit different? Now, the last last bar might be an interesting one to do that on. And rather than just playing that, you know, that G chord all the way through, move up through some other chords that kind of take us back to the start. Something like this. So in that last bar, rather than playing a G chord all the way through, we're starting on the G and then moving up through the A flat and the B flat, and then that brings us back to start again on the C the next time around the progression. Now I said at the start that, that chord shape, the power chord shape, is probably one of the most useful chords, if not the most useful chord shape that you will uh, you'll ever learn. Um, but actually, in terms of playing a rock chord progression, these four chords are really, really useful. Now here we're just playing them in a descending pattern and then, and then coming back up and, and looping the thing around. But there's quite a lot you can do if you experiment and just change the order that you play the chords in. So this time around, let's play, so let's say, start on C, go down to the A flat, back up to the B flat, and finish on the G. Get something like this. Or 
I absolutely go from the C all the way down to the G to begin with and then work my way back up Do the progression Lots of, uh, lots of possibilities. Here we're playing in the key of C. Starting on the C uh, chord and like, I don't want to turn this into a music theory lesson, this is about playing rather than um, like, taking the, the theory apart too much, but I'm telling you now it's in the key of C minor. And what's important is the chord that we start on and then the amount that we move to get to the different chords. And we can move that around, so if we start on C Go down two, go down two, go down one. That's that progression A in the key of C. If we start, let's say, on a D chord, then went down two, to C, and then down another two, it would be flat, and down another one, A. That gives us the same progression, but in the key of uh, D minor. Okay, so it's what's important is the, the chord that you're starting on. And here I'm going to show you uh, something you can do to exploit open strings. Let's play it in the key of E. Now, at first glance you might think, okay, we'll take the, the C chord that we'll, we'll play it here and move it up so we're starting at the 12th fret. It gives us an E power chord and we can play the progression there. From E to D. C to B. What I actually want to do is play the same shape, so starting on an E, but we're going to use the E at the 7th fret on the A string. So it's the same shape, but everything's moved up a string. Play that progression through, starting on E. a minute ago I said about using an open string. Because we're playing in the key of E, we've got a bottom E string here, which is in the key. It's the root note. It's a really important note in terms of the key. And what we can do is play that E power chord, but also play that bottom E string. That's really effective when I'm playing that bottom E string, it's nice and low. There's something about the way your ear gets drawn to the lower, the lower note that you're hearing. So it really enforces the key centre. So I'm muting that so it doesn't get all washy and mushy, but we've still got a good low chug going on. I'm playing the whole chord. I'm playing the whole chord and then really droning away on the bottom E string. And we can move the progression through. C, sorry, from uh, E we're playing in here, so start on an E, go down to D, go down to C, down to B. For each chord, we're going to let that, that bottom E string chug away. You can hear how effective that is. Obviously that only works in certain keys. If you've got your guitar in drop D, so where it's standard tuning but your bottom strings tuned down to a D, then that would work if you were starting on a D chord, playing that progression. Really I'm not trying to teach you uh, any specific way to play these chord progressions, I just want to show you some ideas for ways you can you can approach a chord progression so rather than just, just playing a chord, you know, whether you could introduce palm muting, you could introduce arpeggios, you could introduce the idea of a, a droning bass, bass note. Um, 
there's a sequence of chords there, look at ways you can play those in different orders to make the whole thing a little bit more interesting and give you a bit more, a bit more variety and that kind of leads you on the way to start to compose your own chord progressions. In that key we're playing in, there's more than just four, four chords. Just happens the example I'm showing you here just happens to be using four, but but there are others, and that's something we'll perhaps talk about in a in a future future tutorial. This is just something to kind of to get you started on the idea of looking at a looking at a chord progression and trying to find ways to make it a little bit more uh, a little bit more interesting. Okay, I hope you found that useful. If you did, please click like. If you really enjoyed it, please click subscribe, and you'll be notified any time I upload uh, any new videos onto the channel. If you've got a question that you want to ask me, then if you go here, fill in the form, send your question in, I'll try and get around to answering it in a future video. It's a little bit more reliable than uh, leaving me questions in the comments section. YouTube's not really that good at letting me know when people comment on videos, so often questions go unnoticed and unanswered. If you send that form, uh, send your question in through that form, it comes direct to me through the Fatfish website, so I know that you've sent your question in. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another video next time. Bye for now.